Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We've got a big game at the big house. Number 10 Penn State takes on number 5 Michigan in a game that is huge, not only for the Big Ten East standings, but also for the college football playoff picture. Guys, we should be in for a thriller on Saturday, a classic on Saturday. The Wolverines, they defeated Penn State last year 21-17 all the way to their college football playoff berth. Penn State won in Ann Arbor in 2020, but prior to that, these two teams alternated victories. Prior to that, the home team had won four straight games. Will we get back to that trend on Saturday, or will Penn State come on the road and pull off the upset? That is is what we are here to answer today. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. And guys, we were hitting over 60% of our bets this year, hitting 82% on the money line. We want you to take advantage of these picks. We want you to win with us and to become a part of our GE Nation. So take a look at that, guys, again, down in the description below. So let's dive into this game, guys. I mean, we have seen some classic matchups in recent years between Penn State and Michigan. And typically, the home team is the one that prevails. Obviously, it has not been the case the last two years. Uh, but prior to that, it was kind of a, a running joke. It was, oh, whoever's at home just automatically wins. Uh, this feels a little bit different. That's not necessarily the way the trend could go. Uh, and we take a look at the personnel, guys. Uh, let's look at Penn State first, offensively. Uh, first off, the Nittany Lions are coming off a of bye week. That is huge. How fortunate for them to get a week of rest prior to one of the biggest games of the season for them. And I will say, Penn State offensively, it's amazing what can happen when you have a healthy quarterback, when you have a healthy Sean Clifford. The Nittany Lions are averaging 34.4 points per game, and they're very balanced. 251 passing yards per game and 192.6 rushing yards per game. I mean, that's pretty dang good, especially in the mighty Big Ten. Uh, John Clifford, already thrown for over 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns, just 2 interceptions. But I really think that it has been the running back duo of Nick Singleton and Catron Allen that have kind of surprised most people and has really been the difference maker for Penn State this year. Both of those guys, Singleton and Allen, are freshmen. Freshman running back duo. And Singleton has 463 yards and 5 touchdowns. Allen has 303 yards and 3 touchdowns. And they have given this Penn State uh, offense a significant boost. They've taken a lot off of Sean Clifford's back. They've taken a lot of weight off his shoulders. Uh, and provided this balance for this Penn State offense that has made them so tough to stop uh, about midway through the season. So give credit to both of them. Sean Clifford's been great, and we hope he stays healthy because that was kind of the reason Penn State fell off last year after their strong start. He got injured. They never were the same. But now he's healthy, and he has a lot of help surrounding him. When you look at Michigan, guys. Wolverines come in again at 6-0, fifth ranked team in the country, but this is by far their toughest test, both offensively and defensively. I mean, Michigan has, only has one win uh, over a team that currently has a record above 500, and that was Maryland a few weeks ago, the Wolverines winning that game by seven. But I don't want to take anything away from the Wolverines. They're doing what they're supposed to do. They're beating up on the teams they're supposed to do, and they're doing it convincingly, averaging 43 points per game. And they are just about as balanced as Penn State, 246 passing yards per game, 212 rushing yards per game. And ultimately, it all starts with their running back, Blake Corum. I mean, Michigan wants to run the ball, and they're doing it extremely well. Corum already has 735 yards and 11 touchdowns this year. He is the difference maker. He is the playmaker for Michigan. Uh, and obviously, back when the season started, we didn't know exactly who was going to be their quarterback. Was it going to be Cade McNamara? Was it going to be J.J. McCarthy? And just a few games into the year, Harbaugh made the decision that it would be J.J. McCarthy, and he's been playing very well. I think he ultimately was the right decision. I mean, last week, completing 77.8% of his passes, 304 yards, three touchdowns, and their 21-point victory over Indiana. That type of performance is what they're going to need against Penn State. That type of performance is what they're going to need against the Nittany Lions. They're going to need an accurate day 
uh, from McCarthy. They're going to need him to deliver on the throws. He's been pretty accurate for most of the years. Missed on a couple key throws, but he's done a pretty good job of taking care of the football. He's been relatively accurate. Last week was his first 300-plus yard game. They're going to need him to turn in another similar performance against Penn State because Penn State's defense is pretty dang good. And the Lions are pretty dang good. They are pretty dang stingy. But the one thing that Michigan does have going for them in this matchup is the fact that Penn State's weakness defensively is their secondary. Is their secondary. They're allowing 262 passing yards per game compared to about 80 rushing yards per game. There's a pretty big difference there. And you look at the numbers, guys. Penn State allowed 210 passing yards to Northwestern. They allowed 275 passing yards to Central Michigan. They allowed 296 passing yards to Auburn. They allowed 365 passing yards to Purdue. Yes, they won all of those games. And yes, some of those teams may have gotten some stat patterns because they blew out Auburn. They blew out Central Michigan. They won against Northwestern by 10. I mean, you look at those games and you go, oh, well, those teams were playing from behind. They had to throw. Or why does it matter how many yards they allowed? Because they, they crushed all those teams with the exception of Purdue. To, to each their own, pick their poison. But ultimately, guys, it is mildly concerning. They're still giving up that many passing yards, especially to quarterbacks, with the exception of Aiden O'Connell against Purdue, that are not nowhere near the talent level and skill level of J.J. McCarthy at Michigan. So he's going to test them. McCarthy is going to test Penn State secondary on Saturday. He's going to have the home crowd on his side. He's starting to hit his stride, I feel like. Has a major confidence-boosting game against Indiana. He will test them. So what Penn State has to do defensively to win this game against Michigan is to make them one-dimensional. Uh, and obviously, what I think they got to do is they've got to actually force McCarthy to throw. Because what you have to do against Michigan, they want to run the ball. And they're running the ball effectively against everybody. Doesn't matter how good their, uh, their defense is. They're running it well against everybody. So if they can shut down Blake Corum, that secondary can solely focus on the pass. They don't have to worry about the ground game that's averaging over you know, 212 yards per game. They can take it away, make it a non-factor, and focus solely on McCarthy. If Penn State can generate a little bit of pressure on him, if Penn State can generate a little bit of pressure on him, they might be able to pull off his upset at the big house. They've got to find a way to force McCarthy to win the game solely through the air. McCarthy hasn't had much pressure on him. Michigan's been coasting this season. He hasn't had much pressure to deliver through the air in crunch time. If Penn State forces that on him, forces him into a crucial situation where he has to deliver, I don't know if he can do it. That's what the Nittany Lions need to do. Michigan defensively, guys, of course, has been phenomenal per usual. They're allowing just 11.3 points per game and just 247 total yards per game. But again, they haven't faced too many great teams. Three cupcake opponents to start the year. Uh, they took down Maryland. They took down Indiana. Uh, but they haven't really faced anybody of great caliber. They did allow 397 yards to Maryland a few weeks ago. And that was obviously the best offense that Michigan has seen this year. Maryland was the closest offense to, that, that, that to Penn State in terms of just talent-wise and explosiveness. Penn State, guys, like we mentioned earlier, is very balanced, and they will be able to move the ball similar to that of Maryland. Yes, Maryland wants to air it out a little bit more with Talia Tungabailoa and those wide receivers. They want to air it out more than Penn State will, not nearly as balanced, but Penn State has the ability to move the ball well. But what Michigan is doing, especially up front, I don't think can go unnoticed. Michigan, 22 sacks this year. They're generating a lot of pressure. They've forced seven turnovers this year. And like Penn State, their run game has been very stingy, only allowing 81.7 rushing yards per game. So ultimately, this is going to come down to which quarterback can deliver when the pressure is put on them. I don't expect Blake Quorum to have a huge day against this Penn State front seven, but I also don't expect Nick Singleton or Catron Allen, despite having a duo of running backs, I don't expect them to light up this Michigan front seven either. Both running games have been so stingy, so ultimately it comes down to which team moves the ball better through the air. Which quarterback can deliver on those second and third and long situations? Which quarterback is going to deliver if the game is on the line? And ultimately, guys, I believe that is going to be J.J. McCarthy and Michigan. I believe that Michigan will win this game. I think this is a relatively close game. And if you really want to deep, take a deep dive into the schedule, this is really the first true test for both teams. Penn State, a little bit more battle-tested. They faced a road environment at Purdue, won that game. They faced a tough road environment at Auburn. They won that game. But obviously, the big house is a little bit different. The big house is no Purdue. The big house is no Jordan-Hare Stadium. And Penn State sucked the life out of Jordan-Hare Stadium pretty early in that one. The big house is going to be rocking all day long. All day long. And I don't think the Nittany Lions have faced an environment like this yet, nor have they faced a defense like this yet. 
This will be a relatively, to me, a low-scoring game. 21-17 last year, expected to be roughly around the same score this year. But ultimately, Michigan wins again over Penn State. Home field advantage playing a huge role here. J.J. McCarthy delivers when he needs to. Finally delivers in a game where he's actually needed. And Michigan remains undefeated. 7-0, remains a top-5 team, and... This might become a two-team race in the Big Ten East, guys, between the Buckeyes and Michigan. Right now, it feels like we are on a collision course for a huge, huge game in the final week of the season. Don't want to get too far, far ahead of ourselves, but if the Wolverines can pull this one off against Penn State, we're going to be in store for a very fun finish in the Big Ten East. So, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. We are taking the Wolverines to take down Penn State on Saturday morning. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Check those out. Sign up for those today and become a part of our GE Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.